It's the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine. Let's get out of here. Ay. Oh, oh, hey, guys, it's Luis Co here. Yeah. I'm kind of excited that rapture might be soon, okay? Hey, that got it. Oh, yeah, I want to get out of here. I got my rapture helmet on. Where are you fly, man? It might happen today, okay? Ay. Yeah, that's my Enrico guy. That's my Enrico character. Um, the bread. Yeah, the secret's in the bread. Woo! I'm excited about this. Okay, put the bread back. Okay. There we go. Okay, so, um, lots to say. I'm gonna try and condense it real short. Check out the old videos if you haven't checked out the old stuff. Um, just a fast recap. I think very likely he would have died Wednesday, April 25th, 31 AD. Go check out my old video for that as to reasons why he would have uh, died right at the, at the dusk on uh, on that day, right between Wednesday and Thursday, and rose right at dusk between Saturday and Sunday. Um, long story, but if 31 AD was the crucifixion, this might be the year of the rapture. What's the best feast day? What's the best appointed time for the rapture? Well, we've been doing this whole thing, going nuts, and man, Feast of Weeks is extra special this time. Uh, again, check out the last couple of videos. I did a live stream and like four videos on, on the theme of Feast of Weeks. So we're going to just zero it in on some simple ideas. We're going to remind you some things because people don't watch everything. And if they do watch it, they forget. Hey, I am a human being too. I got a short attention span. James 1.18 and Leviticus 23.17. We're going to go through that right now. So James 1.18. And um, here, what I'll do is I'm going to sit down and I'm going to show you my picture better and show you my scripture. Let's do that. All right, so here's James 1.18. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So James 1.18 is saying we are a kind of a first fruit of his creatures. Okay, go back to Leviticus 23, verse 17. Okay, so um, this is one of the feasts of the Lord, Feast of Weeks. You shall bring from your dwelling two wave, loaf off, wave loaves of two tenths of an ephah. They shall be a fine flour. They shall be baked with leaven. They are the first fruits of the Lord. The two wave loaves are the first fruits of the Lord. The two wave loaves baked with leaven are the first fruits of the Lord. Who are the first fruits. We are the first fruits. Who are the first fruits? We are the first fruits. When do you offer the first fruits? On the Feast of Weeks. When do you offer the first fruits? On the Feast of Weeks. You don't offer the first fruits on the Feast of Trumpets. In fact, over here in Leviticus 23, it doesn't say anything. Just, you know, bring uh, uh, an offering made by fire in verse 25. Day of Atonement, you'll get the same kind of lingo. Offering made by fire, afflict your souls. Feast of Tabernacles, offering made by fire. Bring the, bring the, uh, the grapes from your field. But Levi Fe uh, Feast of Weeks, lots of detail. This is the game changer, is the two wave loaves, which are the first fruits, and we are the first fruits, according to James 1.18. Now let's go back to my little picture here, and we'll make it a little bigger. So what we have here is... Let's go back to Leviticus 23, and we, we forgot to really highlight something else before we look at this picture. You shall bring from your dwellings, from your dwellings, from your house. You shall bring the bread out of your house that you've already baked. You've got to bake something in your house and bring it out. We are in our in our houses right now, we're in our bodies, we're in our temples right now, but we're also actually in homes and apartments, and we're actually waiting to be taken out. So on the feast two weeks, you take the bread out of the house that's already baked. When you bake this bread with leaven, and you take the leaven of Christ, and you become, and you bake the leaven with the bread, you become a new um, creation. So this bread, which is baked with leaven, is now a new thing and it's baked and, and the leaven bring, puts air into the bread which makes it really big and fluffy and with this bread in in leviticus 23 you also offer two lambs depending on the translation you read it makes most sense that you uh wave the the two breads with two lambs here in this version it says the priest shall wave 
uh, them with the bread of the first fruits as a wave offering before the Lord with the two lambs. So the two breads are with the two lambs. Uh, really, this them is not even translated. That them shouldn't even be there. So it, this verse really makes most sense if you if it says that the two breads are waved with the two lambs. Okay, in the air. All right. So we've got this picture, really bad picture, <laughs> of the high priest waving the two uh, the wave loaves and the two lambs in the air. This is the only time, with the exception of the Feast of First Fruits, when Christ was raised from the dead, the dead uh, on, on that feast, where you wave it in the air, you wave that sheep. But in the Feast of Weeks, the only thing that you wave in the air is the two wave loaves and the two lambs. You wave the First Fruits, you wave us in the air as an offering to the Lord. You don't do that on trumpets. You don't do that on Day of Atonement. You don't do that on Tabernacles. You only do this on the Feast of Weeks. Man, oh man, this is interesting. And we are the first fruits. You don't wave the first fruits. You don't wave us on the trumpets. You don't wave us on, on uh, Day of Atonement. You don't wave us on Tabernacles. You only wave us on the uh, Feast of Weeks. You bake the bread in your house. You mix it with leaven, the leaven of Christ. It rises. It becomes a new uh, creation or creature I should say and um, you, you present it to the Lord with the lambs all right now first Thessalonians 4 16 what are we doing what are we doing let's let's, let's read that uh, for uh, 16 for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of an archangel with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first then we who are alive and remain, right, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. There's the lambs. There's the breath. And thus we shall be with the Lord always. Therefore, terrify each other with these words because you've got to endure. No, comfort each other with these words. First Thessalonians 4.18. So um, the next thing that I wanted to highlight here is that we've got some Greek words in the New Testament. And we get the, these Greek words from one little parable that I wanted to highlight. And it's actually a parable, actually. Uh, this Jesus rides in, triumphal entry, John 12. And what does he say here? He says, Most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life will in this world, will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, uh, him my father will honor. So that word um, grain is also fruit. See that fruit? Okay, so we're talking about first fruits and fruit. And so when Jesus, what he's saying is he he's going to die so that he can produce much uh, fruit. Like we are his fruit. We are. We are an offering to him, really, actually, because we have faith in him. That's the only thing that we can please him with is our faith. And so, um, going into that word that he said with fruits, that is G2590, and that Greek word is karpos. So, karpos means fruits. The root word of fruits is, get this, harpazo. G726, which means to seize, to catch away. The root word for fruit is harpazo. The root word for fruits is harpazo. The wor root word for fruits is harpazo. That harpazo word is in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 16 through 18. When we're going to meet the Lord in the air. Every time you see fruits, the root word of it is harpazo. The root word of harpazo is uh, G138, Aramoya, which means to be chosen, to be taken for oneself. We are a chosen generation, a holy priesthood, right? First Peter chapter 2. And then the root word of that it goes to Ario, G142, to lift, to raise up, to take up or away. We're going to meet him in the Ario, man. To meet him in the Ario. So the root word of fruit goes all the way to Ario. It goes all the way to 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, or, you know, 15 through 18, which connects us with the Feast of Weeks, in which the, the priest waves the, lo the fruits in the Ario, in the air, to meet the Lord. Ah, that's wonderful. 
Now, this first fruits, it says in Leviticus 23, verse 17, when it's talking about the bread, the bread is the first fruits. What is bread in Greek? It's artos. Our Father, who art in heaven, give us, you know, give us this day our daily bread. It, bread. That word is artos, G740. It's bread. What is that root word? It gets you to areo as well. The root, root, root word of bread is areo, G142, to lift, to raise, or to take up and away. So the root word of fruit and bread is air. The root word of fruit and bread is air. First fruits is the bread which goes in the air and was waved up in the air. The high priest waves the first fruits in the air. Isn't it amazing that in the Feast of the Lord, in Leviticus 23, our Father, he doesn't actually tell us what the offerings are in the, in the fall feast. All he does, he, he, he actually gives us so much detail in the Feast of Weeks, Shavuot, uh, right? But the big, big, big difference that it was so overlooked, I think, from everybody up to this point was those wave loaves with leaven right there, right in 17. And so you shall bring from your dwellings, from your houses, two wave loaves of two tenths of an ephah. They shall be a fine flour. They shall be baked with leaven. They are the first fruits to the Lord. Oh, boy. Well, I don't know if it's this year, guys, but, uh, oh, man, I love now the Feast of Weeks. I love it. The typology is there. It ties so perfectly with our uh, Harpazo verses in 1 Thessalonians 4, 15 through 18. That same phrase in 1 Thessalonians 4, 15 through 18 is tied to Exodus 19, when the trump of God sounds and they all are terrified and the whole earth shakes and the mountain trembles and there's smoke everywhere. And that Exodus 19 is during the third month, which is tied to the Feast of Shavuot, the same time when Israel uh, was giving their ketubah, their, their marriage proposal. And so what a great way to bring... Israel to jealousy, if we are presented to the Lord in the air, in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Well, hope this is the one, but if this is not it, we're going to keep on looking. Uh, get tight with Christ, and if you do, if you got the right leaven, you'll be leaving soon. I love you guys very much. One day closer, go Jesus, go. Go Jesus, go.